Hey guys, Quiv, the Lazy Geek here. And today we're gonna to talk about how to use your calibration frames now that you've taken them using the information in the last video. So you now have dark frames, flat frames, flat, flat darks, and maybe even bias frames. What do we do with all of those? Well, if you're not having PixInsight, if you're, if you're not using PixInsight or um, APP, Astro Pixel Processor, uh, you likely will, like most people I've seen, use Deep Sky Stacker. And this is how I started as well, by using Deep Sky St Stacker. And Deep St Sky Stacker will actually automatically combine your dark frames, flat frames, dark flats, and bias frames into what is called a master light. And by that, it basically will build a master dark frame. It will build a master bias frame it might subtract the master bias frame from the master dark frame uh, and do some dark frame optimization if you set it up that way. I do not do that because it doesn't work well with cameras that have amp glow uh, and I do not take bias frames anyway. Uh, it will also build uh, a master flat dark frame and it will also uh, use that master flat dark frame to calibrate your flat frames before it builds uh, a master flat frame. Then, <laughs> And this is all explained in uh, Deep Sky Stacker's documentation, so I recommend uh, you have a look at that. It's very well explained there. But basically, it will obtain a master dark, a master flat, and a master bias. And it can basically subtract those as necessary from or divide them from the uh, light frames. So it will calibrate the light frames by removing the dark frame and by, re by dividing uh, the flat frame from the light frame, um, it will also use the bias frame if your dark frame has been optimized. Uh, but again, it's all in the background, so you don't really need to know how it's done. And then once it has calibrated all of the light frames, it just will stack them together, average them together, and output the master light, which is what you actually want to process. So how do you do that? Well, I'm going to open Deep Sky Stacker, and here it is. And for me, I have a color camera, the 533 MC Pro. Uh, and I've noticed that Deep Sky Stacker doesn't recognize my color pictures as color uh, picture, with like a, a camera with what is called a Bayer pattern on top of the pixels. Like one pixel is re green, red, the next one is green, the one after that is green, and the next one is blue, and then red, green, green, blue, red, green, green, blue. It's called the Bayer pattern. Uh, and it's critical for Deep Sky Stacker to understand that it's there. And so if you have like this camera or another color camera, it's very often that you'll want to go to this RAW or FITS DDP setting and you want to go inside like either RAW frames or uh, FITS file. For me, it's going to be FIT files because I generate FIT files from uh, my camera with uh, the capture system that I use called Nina. And uh, I say that uh, my 16-bit FIT files are raw files created by a color CCD camera, which it is the case. And then I need to specify my Bayer pattern. And for this camera, and for most cameras in the ASI lineup or in the QHY lineup, it's RGGB. There are some cameras where it's different, like the 1600 MC Pro, which is now discontinued. I don't even remember what pattern it is. So you want to check the specs of your camera on your manufacturer website to make sure that you have uh, the right Bayer pattern. And for me, RGGB. And so I can just say, OK, and I'm gone. I'm done. If you have a monochrome camera, you don't need to mess with that. So let's have a look at my frames. So you can see that I have the great Orion Nebula, and I have something that's pretty specific about this, is that I have taken this over two days. So I'm gonna assume that, you know, I took uh, dark frames one day and light frames, and then dark frames and light frames again a second day, maybe at a different temperature for whatever reason. And I also moved the equipment and changed the equipment a little bit, so I have different sets of flat frames. And so we're gonna look at an example where you have to calibrate data for multiple days. And it's very easy really in principle is you'll take your light frames for one day and you'll match them with all of the dark frames that have the same length, bias, offset, uh, sorry, length, gain, offset, and camera temperature, sensor temperature. Uh, you're also gonna take all of the flat frames that you took for that particular setup 
so at the time during that night uh, most likely plus all the matching dark flats and then you're going to use just those to calibrate your light frames you just calibrate them you don't stack them yet you calibrate and then you are going to take the second your second day you're going to do exactly the same thing you're going to find the appropriate dark frames the appropriate flats the appropriate dark flats and you're going to calibrate your second day frames you do not stack them yet so you end up with a lot of calibrated frames and once they're all calibrated day one with day one calibration day two with day two calibration then you can stack them you don't want to stack them separately and then stack the calibrated frames together. You just want, you know, to, uh, to calibrate them separately and then stack them all together. That's, and that's the system that Deep Sky Stacker will do automatically for you, for you using what they call file groups, I think. So for example, uh, if I look at my day one here, you can see I have dark frames, I have flat frames and I have light frames. I don't have bias frames because as I mentioned, I don't take bias frames. Uh, and that's a person, personal choice. Um, then, you know, I can see I have open picture files here. So open picture files is basically for my light frames. So I'm going to go into day one light frames and I'm going to select everything in there. I want to stack all of my light frames together. And I'm going to open that. And we're going to see that in Deep, Deep Sky Stacker, all of my light frames appear. And uh, we're seeing, you know, that they're all color. So I can see this little... Uh, pattern there that tells me that Deep Sky Stacker has noticed that those are uh, colored frames, so, which is exactly why we did that setting earlier. And then I'm going to import the dark frames so I can go to my day one dark frames and uh, take all of that. And then I can go to my flat frames. So I'm going to go to flat uh, frames. And again, I'm going to go to day one and I'm going to go to flat and I'm going to select all of my flats and validate. And ideally, I would have taken dark flat frames. In this particular case, I didn't. So I don't have dark flat frames. But if you have dark flat frames, you should add, add them in there. And if you have bias frame, you, so, you should also add them in there. But now we've done day one. What about day two? Well, when I added frames for day one, you noticed, or you might have noticed, that the second tab appeared, group one, wherein you can put actually your day two calibration frames and light frames. So I can go to group one and then open my uh, um, tab here and go to light, select all of my dark lights for day two, and then I'm going to select the corresponding dark frames for day two. So same as before, dark frames for day two, not day one, because they're different in this particular case. And I'm going to open that. Then I'm going to do the same for the flat frames. Again, I'm going to select the flat frames for, for day two, because my equipment changed a little bit on uh, day two. And we're going to validate that. And if I had dark flat frames or bias frames, I would do the same. So now we end up with two sets of uh, data and you can see if that if you have a third day with different calibration data again you could do a group another group here as well now if your calibration data is the same across across two days or two nights or three nights or four nights if you did not move the equipment the camera sensor was always at the same temperature same gain same offset same exposure time you do not need to separate that by group you want to just use a single group but here we're doing the assumption that my flats and my darks are different per night uh, because i took my pictures differently each night so that's something very important to keep in mind uh, and now that I have everything I'm actually going to be very simple you can I, I could check all above a threshold I'm not going to bother with that I, I don't want to be go too much into detail I'm just going to check all and I'm going to check that in group one it's also checked all and then the only thing I need to do is I'm going to click on register checked uh, pictures and uh, here I might I, I actually tested that proud to this video so I already have registered the pictures but I will want to register them again one of the things that you um, can do is you can also stack them at the same time because Deep Sky Stacker will be smart it will do group one it will do the main group both of them separately creating basically the calibrated frames and then it will stack them together in the end so it is very smart it doesn't um, 
you know, need to be hand guided or handheld, it will actually do everything automatically. So in this case, with Deep Sky Stacker, you can actually stack everything and I could say, okay. And then um, we have a problem, Houston. So I know what happened. Uh, so you can see here, I have this autosave.tiff. This is my master uh, light frame that I basically created prior to recording this video. And it's not exactly the same size as my others because it's kind of a superset of uh, my light frames, which have small uh, changes in position between the light frames, which is called dithering. Dithering is super important. Check the video about that above. Uh, but I want to just uncheck that and now the stacking should be working properly. So let's try again. We're gonna register and stack all of the pictures. We can say, okay. And we still have something that is uh, not matching. So let's see. Okay, what happened is that even with that uh, autosave file uh, unchecked, uh, it still like was taking it into account. So I had to actually remove it from the list. Uh, simple enough. So that's one thing. If you see an error like that, you just look, need to look through your list of images to see if there's any image that shouldn't be in there that has been included, for example, a dark frame for another camera. Uh, that could be an, uh, an issue. Okay, so now let's click on register the pictures. Let's validate and we'll see that we have Deep Sky Stacker coming up with all of this information, I can take the recommended settings, blah, 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 blah. I will not go into the details of that because I haven't used Deep Sky Stacker in five years. <laughs> so I'm not uh, an expert, uh, but you know, I can say, okay, and it will start to just register everything and stack everything. And it will register each, and it will calibrate and register each day separately uh, until it's, uh, it's done. And then it will take all of those frames and stack them together. Uh, so it's a very convenient piece of software. And here we are, the process is over. Deep Sky Stacker has done everything for me. So, you know, not much to do. It has saved this as a TIFF file, which I can just open in whatever processing software that I want to use. And that's pretty much it. You can see that Orion is here. There's a bit of the Horsehead Nebula and the Flame Nebula kind of visible here. Everything worked great. So this is it for a Deep Sky Stacker. Uh, Deep Sky Stacker is very auto automated, very powerful. It has results that are, to my uh, opinion, slightly inferior to what PixInsight can achieve. But PixInsight, even with its uh, scripts, can have some issues. Now I'm gonna go quickly through how you would do exactly the same thing in PixInsight. So in PixInsight, you'd be going to scripts um, and batch processing, and then you want to use the weighted batch processing. You do not want to use the um, batch pre-processing, which is older. Uh, the weighted batch processing is much more optimized um, and it can use, if you do the stacking together, it can actually like put weights on each of the frames automatically based on like things like the signal to noise ratio or that kind of stuff. It's very powerful. I typically don't use it too much. I use it to calibrate. Um, I, uh, if you have, want to have more details about how I do my pre-processing, including the stacking in PixInsight, you can check my video on the Needle Galaxy, which I'm linking to up there uh, right now. Now, uh, we're in uh, the batch pre-processing script and here, as far as I know, there are no groups. So that means that I cannot do like in Deep Sky Stacker and stack all of my two nights of imaging at once since they have different calibration frames. Um, if your calibration frames, the only difference was the time, like first night was 30 seconds exposure, second night was 20, second night was 20 sec seconds exposure, it would actually ma work in one go. Uh, but basically, what I'm gonna do is you can see I have the add lights button here. So I can use the add lights to go um, into my Orion Nebula um, picture, and then I'm gonna choose day one only and I'm gonna choose all of my lights. I'm gonna validate, and you can see it has all of the 20 seconds uh, lights. And if you have used, by the way, proper uh, capture software like Nina, your filter will also be attached to each of your light frames. Um, and it's the same for Deep Sky Stacker. And it's very important because that way, you, if you have multiple fil filters for a monochrome camera, it will calibrate this, uh, the monochrome camera with the flats for the correct filter. Uh, 
So it will know that this light is using the L filter, so it will use the flats for the L filter. This light is using the H alpha filter, it will use the flats taken for the H alpha filter. And Deep Sky Stacker will do that, PixInsight will do that. In PixInsight or in Deep Sky Stacker as well, it will also match the exposure time of your darks to the exposure time of the lights. So if you have one set of lights, 30 seconds and one set of uh, lights 20 seconds with each of the respective dark frames you can actually I think for deep sky stacker is the case I'm sure you can do that in, in PixInsight you can mix all of those 30 seconds and 20 seconds dark frames together and they will be matched to the correct light frame automatically uh, because there's an obvious uh, thing that they can uh, that they can do so the metadata the information about your light frames and dark frames and you know, and flat frames that is stored in your image files is very important, which is where you want to take your flat frames, your dark frames, and all of your calibration frames with the right parameters in the capture software that you're using. And Nina does that great, and also Nina happens to be free. So there's nothing to lose by using Nina for that. So now we have the light frames. I can add my flat frames in exactly uh, the same way. And so I'll choose my flat frames for day one. And you can see that I have a checkbox here called calibrate with flat darks. And this is only like if uh, I, I always keep it checked on because then it will match the flat frame exposure time to the exact flat dark exposure time. Otherwise, it might do uh, dark frame optimization, which I explained in the previous video. And because I don't have bias frames, I cannot do it. And then it tends to not really work well for cameras that have M glow. So this checkbox, I will keep it on. You might see that there's the checkbox at the right here, optimize dark frames. I'm going to remove it because I do not want to optimize my dark frames with this camera. Um, and then there's the CFA images checkbox. This is for color cameras, just like we did the setting in Deep Sky Stacker. It's similar in PixInsight. We're just going to select CFA images. And that's pretty much it. If you've already created a master flat frame, master dark, or master bias, you can use those checkboxes to say that instead of a list of dark frames, list of bias frames, list of flat frames, you'll be using a single frame that's already an average of multiple calibration frames. But we don't do that here. We have our flat frame and we have our dark frames. So I'm just going to add my dark frames from day one. And I'm going to dark, and here they are, and I'm going to validate that. And these are my dark frames. You can actually mix your flat frames as well in there. Your sorry, no, your dark flat frames uh, in there as well, or flat dark frames in there as well, because they'll have an exposure time of one second in my case, even though I didn't actually take them in this series. And with uh, this checkbox, calibrate calibrate with flat darks, it will match the dark flats uh, time with the uh, flat exposure time. So it will not mix and match your dark frames, especially if you have this checkbox checked and the uh, optimized dark frame, dark frame unchecked. And then you can also add bias frames as, as, as well. If you have your filter data also properly set up for both your flats and your lights, then you can have all of your filter uh, information, all of your filter light frames and all of your filter flat frames all together in there for that particular night without any issues. It will um, calibrate the right light frames with and the light flat frame right with the right flat frames, etc. etc. So it all is very well uh, done. Uh, what I can do as well is look at this calibrate only uh, checkbox that's in my lights uh, tab. And this one is important if you're having uh, images from a single night or multiple nights that share exactly the same calibration frames. You don't need to use that. So you can just do like in Deep Sky Stacker and stack everything and get the final result. Otherwise, and this is what I do, I have two nights worth of data and those two nights have different calibration frames. So I'm going to click on calibrate only here so that I will generate my calibrated light frames, but I will not stack them yet because then I'll do it for day one and then day two, and then finally I will register them using star registration and then stack them using image integration. So something to, uh, 
to also keep in mind. I will not go this far in this tutorial if you're interested in what I do after the calibration. You can check again my Needle Galaxy pre-processing workflow that I have linked above. Um, okay, so we would calibrate only and uh, you can you don't have to choose a registration reference frame. Registration is basically star alignment between each of your images. You just need to uh, choose the output directory and then it will put all of your uh, calibrated frames in there. And then you would start from scratch again for day two. You put in your light frames, your flat frames, your dark frames, your bias frames, your flat darks in the dark uh, tab and then you do calibrate only and you put them in there. Once that, that's done and you've done the calibration for both of them, you exit the script and you'll be using the star alignment feature in PixInsight, which is here. And then you'd be using, once you've aligned all of your star, your pictures, your calibrated light frames together, you would be using the integration tool, image integration tool, to actually integrate them together. And again, those tools, you would want to check my Needle Galaxy pre-processing workflow to see how they work. So it's a bit more complicated in PixInsight, although on average, I get better results in PixInsight than I do with uh, Deep Sky Stackers. So it is worth it, at least uh, for me. And so that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this series of two videos on those calibration frames have been helpful. Uh, if it has been helpful, please, please like this video. Please also don't forget to subscribe and click on the little uh, notification bell so that you can uh, see my new videos as they come out. There's tons of new content uh, coming up that's useful for everyone who does astrophotography. Uh, so, you know, don't hesitate. And, uh, you know, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was useful. Please don't forget to look up at the stars whenever you can. And I'll see you next time.